Children ages 12 to 18 years old are now being inoculated with the Pfizer vaccine that has been FDA approved for that age cohort. As we approach the start of the new academic year, Education Minister Favel Williams is reminding parents and guardians to get their children vaccinated so that face-to-face -face classes can once more become a normal part of the teaching and learning process. And while the children are getting their shots, members of the general public are also being encouraged to boldly take the step too. Let's get vaccinated and get back to life. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. We have some more important messages for you that are unfolding right now. Jamaica's COVID-19 vaccination plan is still in effect. If you wish to make an appointment, please do so online by visiting moh.gov.jm or by calling 888-663-5683. Vaccination still a keep. Go get your jab today. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, August 27, 2021. Jamaica has achieved an important milestone in its vaccination program with more than half a million doses of COVID-19 vaccines now administered among the local population. Up to 4 p.m. on Thursday, the island was up to 500,605 doses administered. Of that number, 359,675 were first doses and 139,242 were second doses. The remainder were single-dose vaccinations. We did say that by the end of September we wanted to get to uh, 700,000 doses. We still have some ways to go, but judging from the uptick in take-up, it is for us to meet that target and I believe it is well, uh, we, we are well able to do so. Government's broader goal is to vaccinate 65% of the population against the deadly disease by March 2022. As the island races to prevent illness and death associated with COVID-19, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is encouraging members of the public to get vaccinated. To do so, Jamaicans are encouraged to make their vaccination appointments online at www.moh.gov.jm or by calling the Vaccination Call Center at 888-1-LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. Persons are reminded to visit the vaccination site with their government-issued identification or a letter from a Justice of the Peace. Those due a second dose will also need to take their vaccination card. At the same time, the ministry is urging the public to remain vigilant and continue the infection prevention and control measures, notably mask wearing, maintaining a physical distance from others, and frequently washing and or sanitizing hands. On Wednesday, August 25, the island recorded 463 new COVID-19 infections and confirmed 22 deaths. The new cases moved the total number of infections to 64,294 since the first case was recorded last year, while the death toll climbed to 1,453. Meanwhile, there has been another boost to the country's inoculation program with the Canadian government's donation of 200,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines to Jamaica. The vaccines arrived at the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston Thursday afternoon. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton says it marks more than 820,000 doses of vaccines received in the last four weeks alone. He adds that since COVID-19 vaccinations began in March this year, the island has received more than a million doses of vaccines. Before the month is out, we're likely to have another 100 or 200,000 doses. The Canadian donation today adds to other um, stocks that we have. And the message it also sends to Jamaicans is that we have no excuse. Uh, in the past, uh, the lack of vaccines was the issue. Today, we have vaccines in storage, and indeed, we have different brands for those who are brand sensitive. And so it really is up to us now as a people, as a country to go out and to make the vaccines available, manage the logistics, make the convincing arguments and get Jamaicans out so that we can 
also build the resilience that others have done and others are doing. The three brands of vaccines now available to Jamaicans are AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer. They have come from various channels including the African Medical Supply Platform, the COVAX facility, Canada, India, Mexico, the United Kingdom and the United States. In other news, the country's economic performance for the April to June 2021 quarter registered growth of 12.9% when compared to the corresponding period last year. Growth of 2.3% was also recorded for the first six months of the calendar year. The preliminary figures were released by the Planning Institute of Jamaica, PIOJ, at its quarterly press briefing yesterday. Director General Dr. Wayne Henry says the April to June performance is an indication that the economy has begun to recover. He says the growth reflects the impact of relaxed containment measures that were implemented to manage the COVID-19 pandemic. It was also spurred by increased domestic and external demand for Jamaica's goods and services. Increased operating hours for businesses, which facilitated higher capacity utilization rates and production levels. An increase in the implementation of residential and commercial building projects and road construction works. Dr. Henry adds that improved weather conditions as well as higher levels of employment and business confidence also contributed. He says over the short term, it is anticipated that the economy will continue to record strong growth as most industries continue to recover. For July to September 2021, growth in, in output is anticipated to be within the range of 4% to 6%. The PIOJ's projection is for growth in output within the range of 6% to 10 percent for the full fiscal year. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries will be providing an immediate support of 50 million dollars in input relief to banana and plantain farmers in Portland and St. Mary. Portfolio Minister Floyd Green made the announcement at a virtual media briefing held at the ministry on Wednesday. The support will be provided through the Banana Board. It's in response to the damage caused by the recent passage of Tropical Storm Grace. The plantain and banana farmers in the eastern part of the country were among the worst affected, resulting in a 29% loss to the industries. Minister Green says that equates to about $300 million. On a broader scale, the Agriculture Minister says preliminary estimates indicate that more than 10,000 farmers across the island were impacted by Tropical Storm Grace, with losses totaling $700 million. He is encouraging farmers affected by the storm to contact their nearest Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, office. With the island again experiencing inclement weather, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, is urging citizens to take the necessary steps to protect their properties. Acting Director General of ODPEM, Richard Thompson, says it's important for residents to remain in a state of constant preparedness as this is shaping up to be an above-normal Atlantic hurricane season. We are expecting as well um, three to five major hurricanes. Uh, major hurricanes being category three systems. Look at your general yard situation if you have a lot of stuff on the outside. Sometimes we tend to have a lot of old stuff that we would throw down in the yard. You have to start cleaning, cleaning up those, getting rid of them, what you can get rid of, what you have to store, you put them in storage because these can act as missiles during, during a hurricane. Mr. Thompson was speaking at JIS's Get the Facts program recently. Jamaica has been experiencing thunderstorms and heavy rainfalls associated with Tropical Storm Ida, which continues to move away from the island. Persons are cautioned to be careful in flood-prone areas, even as weather conditions are expected to return to near normal by Saturday. And finally, Mayor of Kingston, Senator Delroy Williams, says the feeding program for the homeless is continuing on the no-movement days. He gave the update at a recent housing development ceremony for the community of Bell Rock in St. Andrew. He says persons can rest assured that the program will continue as normal. Rest assured that the feeding program for the homeless is, will be in full swing over the period of lockdown. And albeit in a very organized and structured way to be in keeping with the orders. Seven no-movement days were recently announced by the Prime Minister in a bid to bring down the country's rising COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations. Three of those days have already passed, and the measures continue this coming Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, when only certain prescribed essential workers and exempted groups will be allowed to move. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. The following is brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. We see parents who believe 
Children have no rights and must be lashed in order to be brought under control. And we see family members who believe that the only way to resolve disputes over ownership and property is by fighting, oftentimes to the death. And we see intimate partners viewing each other as property with rights to control, even by force. And we see it in the gang and don culture employing violence to control and subjugate entire communities. Let us all commit to protecting our freedom from violence. The proceeding was brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. While government takes steps to prepare students for the safe resumption of face-to-face -face learning, it is also working to transform the sector. Let's take a look at some of the projects on the syllabus set to provide increased support and efficiency. According to the late civil rights activist Nelson Mandela, all children are our greatest treasure. They are our future. Those who abuse them tear at the fabric of our society and weaken our nation. Our Ministry of Education, Youth and Information knows this all too well. It's why an arm of the ministry, the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, along with other children's rights groups, are working to create a world-class childcare sector. Fundamentally, it is our duty to protect the rights of all children in Jamaica. But more importantly, children in our custody, we have a higher duty to them. One of the actions being undertaken to safeguard children in state care is the decision to audit all private and government-owned children's homes and places of safety. We are going through the process of having the auditors go into the homes to look at how they're managing their finances, how they're taking care of their children in terms of nutrition, in terms of education, in terms of the environment the children live in, in terms of the human resource requirements of these homes. The facilities in state homes will also be upgraded. We have commissioned several internal and external safety reviews and audits to assess the current facilities, including any safety or security concerns. And are making recommendations to central government to make improvements. In addition to delivering fire safety training to staff and wards in children's homes, $40 million has been earmarked to upgrade fire safety equipment over a three-year period. The work has been completed at 15 homes, while another 15 are being undertaken. We're also exploring the concept of installing solar energy solutions in some of our homes. This concept paper has been prepared by the CPFSA and been disseminated to the public to see what interest they are in providing the solutions. Another safety measure by government is the implementation of a program dubbed From Crib to Loving Arms, which will ensure that no child under three years of age ends up in state care. A child zero to three requires a significant amount of attention and care and love. And based on all the studies that have been done globally, a childcare facility is not the best place for a baby. We believe that the capacity exists within the foster care system, within the system where persons who are prospective adopters, to place that child in the arms of a loving family. The project is far advanced. The plan has already been drafted and it is now on its way through the system to go to cabinet to ensure that we have the support of the executive of the country. 150 additional social workers are to be employed by the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, to meet the growing needs of the sector. A partnership has also been formed with the Heart NSTA to provide training and certification for staff members working in residential care homes. In a landmark move, a cabinet submission has also been done to amend Section 24 of the Child Care and Protection Act to remove the discretion of judges to place children in penal institutions via correctional orders without charge. Instead, the appropriate psychosocial intervention will be utilized to reform these children rather than placing them in a facility with hardened criminals. Not every child who goes before the courts is a criminal. Some of them 
are runaways, which is not a crime. Some of them are truants from school, which is not a crime. Some of them are engaging in certain physical behaviors with other children, which is not a crime, depending on the circumstances. CPFC has a first responder program, which is a rapid in intervention program that attends to the psychosocial needs of children who are either directly impacted or witness to a major event such as accidents. The first responder program is manned by the Mobile Mental Health Unit of the CPFSA, which comprises two social workers and four clinical psychologists. The team services more than 1,500 wards of state within residential child care facilities. Additionally, a plan of action is being crafted to deal with children who are working on the streets. And the Maxfield Park Children's Home in Kingston is slated to be transformed into a model child care facility. Jamaicans would be aware that the Maxfield Park Children's Home is one of the more challenged homes because it has some of the more challenged children. Along with building a therapeutic center there, it is the medium term objective to build a center of excellence at that home which will be defined as the best childcare facility in Jamaica. A mass quarantine facility has also been modified at the former Windsor Place of Safety in St. Anne. We have been working really hard to improve the system. Myself, the CPFSA, persons from civil society, the police. But we cannot do it alone. Unless we have the cooperation of every single member of Jamaican society, we will not be successful in protecting our children. 1888 Protect. Call us, let us know if you see anything, if you hear anything, if you know anything. Protecting our children is our duty. Concerned about uncollected garbage at home? Do you see garbage piling up on the streets? Then report it. Use the National Solid Waste Management Authority's mobile app to report instances of littering, illegal dumping and uncollected garbage. From anywhere and at any time, be an environment warden by informing the authority of unsightly solid waste. You will be notified when your report has been received by the NSWMA as well as when the matter is resolved. Download the app from the iOS or Android app stores by typing in NSWMA. Play your part, as Jamaica's beauty is everybody's duty. Up next, we journey to the Guys Hill High School in St. Catherine. Follow us to meet some high achievers who are proving that despite the many challenges faced by students today, they are resilient and able to overcome the odds and be excellent in their studies. Creme de la creme through courage, energy, and patience. That's the theme of the Guys Hill High School, which sits on the border of St. Anne, St. Catherine, and St. Mary. I'm sure you've heard the term creme de la creme before. It simply means best of the best. Well, today for School Zone, we're here at the Guys Hill High School to showcase five students who are the true epitome of the school's motto. Watch this. School Zone, School Zone, School Zone, School Zone. try to create a culture of excellence and I'm very happy that the students are embracing this culture of excellence. We're among the top 65, I think we came 61 in high school performance for CSEC and we're among the top 30 in CAPE for the performance of the students and our CAPE students we would have started the advanced program about five to six years ago. So we have done well. We have had students who would have been placed first in the Caribbean four subjects and we have made the CSEC merit list and the CAPE merit list over the years in all different subject areas. So our students have been doing well and today we'll meet four of them. The one is actually a young child, just entered the school, but she has shown that she will do well. 
Hello Jamaica, my name is Alex Murphy. I'm a sixth form student at the Geisel High School. I have 12 60 subjects in grade one and twos. Over the years, I've served as the, a senior prefect, a former deputy head boy. I served in the capacity as the PRO of the math club. I was the captain of the track and field team in 2020. I participated in the University of the West Indies Mathematical Olympiad in 2019, in which I was a finalist and I received a merit award for being placed in the top 10 person. My name is Joel Foster and I'm in grade 7. I'm the top achiever of grade 7 and I'm on the principal honor roll and my average is 90 percent. Good day, my name is Tashania O'Brien. I'm currently a grade 13 student at the Geisel High School. I did eight subjects in CXC and I got grade ones for all eight of them. I have always been on the honor roll from grade seven. Currently, right now, I am on the principal's honor roll with an average of 92.4. Also, I was valedictorian twice for both of my previous graduations. I'm currently a student council representative. Also, I'm a prefect. I'm a cadet sergeant and I'm also a member of the Integrity Action Club. Good day, I am Joshua Neil Hemans. I'm a grade 13 student of the Geisel High School. I'm a past head boy of this institution. I have been the president of the Peer Counseling Society, founder of the Photographers Club. I was valedictorian um, of my batch. Um, I've received top agricultural student for the year 2019 um, for the NTI region in agricultural science. In CXC, I have 13 passes. Um, in grades one and two um, and I've also been successful in my CAPE studies. I've gotten five um, so far and um, six so far and I'm looking to get my other six units this year. Hi, I'm Wendy and I'll be the 2019 second place winner of the Rita Marley Foundation Public Speaking Competition and you're watching School Zone. So you've learned about the outstanding performance and achievements of the students here at this institution and I know you might be wondering how did they do it? Well, here are the answers. It all boils down to time management. How you balance the time, you need to allocate this time for studying and time for training and you have to ensure that you get adequate rest as well. My parents have also encouraged me. I've received encouragement from my pastors, friends, close family members, and that has helped me, has kept me motivated over the years. And I have decided that I have to make them proud. I continuously study a lot and I get a lot of motivation from my teachers and parents. One of the things that I do, proper time management. I also ensure that when I am planning timetables to study, I allocate a specific section for relaxation. It cannot just be studying, 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 you're going to feel stressed. So I have relaxation times as well. I basically study every day. I'm a night, night studier. I only study at night. Not only, but I'm more focused at night. And the way I study is I talk out loud. When I'm studying, I say things over and over until I get it. Or I teach my little sister. I teach my mom. Even though I know that they won't understand what I'm saying. But speaking about it and sharing what I have learned is one of the main things that helps me to remember whatever I study. I like setting to-do lists. I like setting timetables. I have a set amount of hours to sleep. I have um, a certain amount of time to study. So it's good to keep a check. And when you have accomplished something, tick it off your list. It gives you a good feeling that like you have accomplished something and take it one step at a time. Now, Nathan Douglas has an inspirational story that has been making the rounds in the media. He recently took up a construction job to finance his education. Good day, Jamaica. My name is Nathan Douglas. I attend Dysel High School and I'm currently in grade 12. I took up the construction job to help myself because I saw where the credit was getting scarce and my family didn't have the money to pay for it. So I took it up, get, my, get the job done and started to utilize the funds to carry out the educational task that was given online. Over the years, I've achieved a lot of awards um, from grade seven until grade 12. I have six CXC subjects and I'm looking forward to accomplishing more in my career. The students have done exceptionally well over the years. I feel honored. We have an excellent team here at Geisel High School. Our teachers give off their very, very best 
You see, they have to be the best to deal with the students we have because we get students who are low performing students. And so our teachers will go beyond the call of duty to ensure that the students do well. My advice is that students should better prepare themselves. They need to balance everything they do, proper time management, and they just need to keep, keep on having that determination to focus and you'll achieve success. My advice to you is to just keep studying and work hard because hard work pays off. The one thing that I would tell everybody is, especially persons who are in financially um, unstable backgrounds are, are going through certain challenges at home. Do not view your situation as an obstacle. View it as a stepping stone. You know that's not where you want to be five, ten years from now. You And education is one of the main keys to success. Use your education and your obstacle to guide you to become a better person. From my advice to students, believe in yourself. You can do it. I know it's a cliche, but you can do it. Don't limit yourself. Um, if other people don't believe in you, maybe you don't have a good support system, maybe you don't have teachers who support you, but know that you can do it. Know that you have the ability to do it. Work hard and never give up on your goal and, and your dreams. You might not get it the first time, try again. I would advise them to just be yourself, be determined, um, set your mind to what you want, and just go, go, and, go out and get it. Get the experience, even if you fail, don't stop. Have that drive. Look at something that gives you the drive because you don't want to get motivation and then it gone. So have that drive in you know, at all times. Unfortunately, that's all we have for you on today's inspirational episode of School Zone. If you like today's program and would love your school to be featured as well, simply email me at sjohnson at jis.gov.jm. I'm looking forward to your email. Until then, take care. There are three COVID-19 vaccines now available to Jamaicans, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson. It is important that we are aware that all three vaccines are safe and effective. All three help to prevent severe illness, hospitalization, and death from COVID-19. All three have been subject to clinical trials, and the results have been reviewed by the World Health Organization. All three were developed using science that has been around for decades, and all three have received and continue to undergo the most intensive safety monitoring. So, do not delay your vaccination. Whether you decide to set your appointment or spontaneously visit a vaccination center, rest assured that you are taking an important and wise step in helping to create a safer Jamaica for all of us to live, work, raise our families, and do business. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's Jamaica Magazine. But no worries, another program awaits you tomorrow and every day after. Same time, same station. While you wait, why not re-watch today's show on our website, jis.gov.jm or our YouTube channel. And don't you dare miss out on the opportunity to follow us on all the major social media sites for the latest information on government programs and initiatives. I'm Audrey, reminding you to get vaccinated and stay safe. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.